Do you know what the absolute number one essential is to becoming a prep stutter? It's probably not what you think, but in the next few minutes, I'm gonna share with you the top three things you need, and not one of them is gonna cost you a dime. So stay with us. I get a whole lot of emails and I'm thankful for them. In fact, I encourage you to email us because we love hearing from you, the viewers. But one of the most common things I have people ask is this. It goes along the lines of something like, listen, I would love to be a prepper or I would love to be a homesteader, but I have a spouse who is incredibly opposed to this. Or I don't have the finances or I don't even know where to start, but I don't have a family that even is on the same page with me thinking about this kind of thing. The number three thing you need to become a prep setter is this, and it's absolutely essential. All three of these are, but this is the first one, and it's patience. Patience with yourself. And what I mean by that is patience with your lack of knowledge, your lack of resources, your lack of time. All the circumstances that are against you, you've got to be patient until those fall into line and make it easier for you. You've got to be patient with your spouse until they might be on the same page. Don't expect them to think just like you do. And you may not be able to share all of your vision for all of this with them right now, but be patient, okay? And also I would say this is an attribute that you're going to need in the event of an emergency, because if you don't have patience, you will regret it so much. If you act in haste or out of fear or out of an urgency in the moment, you will circumvent all of the work you put in ahead of time to becoming properly prepared for a situation like you're in. So patience is something that you've got to cultivate, something that you need to practice ahead of time over and over and over in many different situations. And lastly, let me just say the, the patience with your finances is something that really gets all of us aggravated, but I wanna encourage you, take the time to just set a little bit aside at a time. It might be $1 a day that you put in a little spot to, to, to help you prepare for the future. That's just fine, whatever you can do, but be patient with yourself, your spouse, your people around you, your circumstances, and your finances. That's the third most important thing that you need to become a prep stutter. Now, let's go to number two. This is equally as important and it's a sense of perseverance. You'll notice if you get the army manual for men who are preparing to go into battle, mindset is the first and foremost, most important thing for them to prepare for a, a situation of emergency. A sense of perseverance is going to give you tenacity. It's going to give you uh, a trajectory of fortitude for the days ahead, no matter what comes, whether you're in a situation where you're persecuted or um, just without your conveniences or whether you are um, in a very difficult spot or a very easy spot, perseverance is something you've got to cultivate. And I love this part because perseverance gives birth to courage. So if you've always wondered, how am I going to become courageous? How do you just be courageous without knowing how to on the front end or having it born into you? Well, you practice perseverance and that is what gives birth to courage. So perseverance is number two. Now, let's go to number one, but before we go there, I wanna tell you what is not an essential to prep studying. This is very important for you to get, okay? Follow with me. Essential to prep studying does not include piling up goods, piling up things and food and resources. That is not going to make you prepared or make you a homesteader or a prep steader of any kind. Just piling up food and stockpiling weapons or whatever it is that you have in mind. So don't let that fool you when, when that might be something that you want to do. Also, popular paraphernalia. I have to mention this because we all get sucked in when we see the ads on 
Facebook and on uh, the television of things that they say we just have to have to become prepared for tomorrow. Well, don't fall prey to the lie that popular paraphernalia is where it's at. You don't have to have anything name brand. You don't have to have anything that the next guy next door has. You have to have the mindset, the patience, the perseverance that's needed, and a few other essentials. But keep that in mind. It isn't dependent on paraphernalia. Also, it's not on performance. If you're thinking that your bravado or your um, affect you can have on the people around you, showing that you are tough, you've got it together, you've got the big souped up vehicle or the uh, muscles that are bigger than the next guy, that's not going to buy you anything in preparing for the future. So don't think that, prepend, uh, that pretending is going to get you very far. Also, your power or your position among your friends is going to be absolutely wiped out in an instant if there is an emergency. When people kick into survival of the fittest mode and are just trying to defend themselves and their family and provide for themselves, all that power and prestige and uh, position that you might have among your friends or, or your close people around you probably will just evaporate in the moment. So don't depend on that to become a proper prep stutter. <laughs> Do you notice all the P's I'm using through this? I just have to chuckle, but as I was making my list to prepare for this video, everything seemed to start with P. And now we're to the number one most important essential for becoming a proficient prep stutter, and that is this. And it sounds very simple, but follow with me. It's practice. It's practice. You've learned it your whole life that practice makes perfect. It doesn't cost you a dime, but let me give you a couple of practical ways that you can practice prep studying. You've heard our video probably already and we'll reference it again down below where you can enroll in classes in your local area or meetup groups or join foraging walks. Um, there are a whole lot of different things you can do on a local level to get practice prep studying and none of it will cost you anything. Also there are little ways that you can prepare your family for tomorrow and I want to just name a few of them and they may sound silly but you need to start thinking this way. Uh, in James Hudson Taylor, he was a famous missionary to China years and years ago. In his biography, he talks about how his mother knew he wanted to be a missionary when he grew up and so she would have him at his request, sleep on the floor with nothing underneath him on the cold, hard floor of the house to practice becoming comfortable being uncomfortable, to practice um, not having the conveniences to make him satisfied with himself or to be able to even sleep. And so he grew up with intentional decisions made when there was no emergency, when there was no requirement to sleep on the floor, but simply to do it to practice for the next day, for tomorrow when he would be older and would be a missionary to a China where they may or may not have a bed for him to sleep on. I love that example and I want to use it for my own life. And there are other ways that you can do it. Uh, if you've, never, if you've never camped before, if that's just so not your thing, start by doing something simple like camping on the living room floor as a family. Make a fun night of it when there's no emergency and it's just a celebratory evening and you may or may not sleep well that night, but just start there. And then once you've mastered that, try camping out in a real tent in your backyard. It's, it's safe, you can run inside to use the restroom, it's something, uh, a, a controlled environment and there's no emergency. And then once you've done that a few times, go ahead and go to a campground or go to someplace else until you're out in the wild with no conveniences and you're doing it intentionally and you're actually enjoying the inconvenience of it. It sounds counterintuitive, but this is how you practice prep studying. I want to give you a couple of other examples. Literally, if you have never taken a cold shower before, this is the time to do it. When you don't have to take a cold shower, when there's no emergency and it won't drag you down emotionally, go ahead and try taking a cold shower and just see if you can do it. Yes, it won't be fun, but it will be good to have mastered that and know that you have, can check that off the list of things that you're capable of doing. 
run drills with your family. I know this sounds silly, but literally when you bring the whole family together and make it something fun, it's, it's going to have a whole lot more value. And your children, if they're in schools right now, they're running drills, they must know something about the importance of preparing for things like hurricanes or tornadoes or terrorist attacks. They have drills for that. Do those in your own home. Practice scenarios, come up with scenarios over the supper table. Um, have each family member come up with a different scenario and then you all discuss how you would handle it, what you would do, where you would go, or who would have what assignment during a scenario like that. I wanna encourage you to memorize scriptures right now on the front end of an emergency. Right now is when you need to hide the Word of God in your heart. Know what you believe. Know how you believe it. Know how it can transform your life and hide it deep so that when the trial comes, you can pull it out and it will give you hope and comfort for those days. Learn how to tie knots. You can do it by yourself. If you don't have anybody else in your family that's excited about this, you can learn how to tie knots, but you can do it together too and it's really fun. You can learn how to bake bread. I want to tell you I have ruined probably at least a hundred loaves of bread over my years. But this is how I've learned what to do is by practicing baking bread until you get it right and try to learn a little bit more each time. Get outside, break a few nails, get your hands dirty, get a few blisters. Putting what you believe into action. I mean that politically, I mean that spiritually, I mean that in your home and what you believe about each other and what is right and your morals, your ethics, your work ethics. Put what you believe into action right now because later it's going to be tested. When it's tested, that's when it's going to count. So right now is the time to practice that. Let me give you an example of how I spend my evenings. When I don't have other things that I'm working on, like learning the blues on the guitar or practicing another language or whatever it is that I have time to do in that free moment, I go over to the fireplace and I have a little pile of sticks and I work on making feather sticks. I'm actually terrible at it. I saw YouTube videos of David Canterbury doing his fire sticks and they looked so simple and easy. I was just sure, oh, in an emergency, that's what I'll do. Well, when you pick one up and just try to do it for the first time, no, it's terrible. It takes a lot of practice to master even a small skill like that. So I want to encourage you, don't just watch YouTube videos and think, oh, in an emergency, I'll do X, Y, or Z. This is the time to practice it. In fact, the other day I talked to somebody, I said, what are you going to do if, if SHTF happens and, and you, you're up a creek? And they said, oh, I'll just eat the grass. I'll just eat the grass in the yard because they didn't know anything else. And I think, oh my, just one meal of that and you will have wished that you had spent a little more time practicing prep studying before something happened. Okay, I want to leave you with two things. I want to tell you this. If you will take just a few moments each day to practice for tomorrow, that's all you've got to do. And incrementally, you will become better and better at becoming a prep stutter. And lastly, I want to leave you with a scripture, if that's all right. This is out of Isaiah chapter 33, verse 6. And I think it goes along right with this. It says, remember that God will be the stability of your times, an abundance of salvation and wisdom and knowledge. And the fear of the Lord is the key to this treasure. Did you hear that? That's why we practice prep studying, and that's what we can be certain of. When times get uncertain, if you have prepared yourself with patience and perseverance and practice, and then leave the rest to God, you're gonna be just fine. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I hope you'll take time to like and share this video with somebody that you love. If you haven't subscribed and hit the bell already, do so now. You've heard all of those things before, but we'll see you next week. And until I see you again, will you make it a point to go out and be a blessing to someone today?
Before you go, I'm going to sing a little snippet from Psalm 4, verses 7 through 8. Now go spread the word.